please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. This Hello. is a case of uh, Richelle versus Harris. Thank you, Jerome. You're welcome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. Rochelle, you are desperate to determine the biological father of your four-year-old daughter, Jasmine. You confess that one man signed your daughter's birth certificate, yet another man is paying child support. Now, Mr. Harris, you're the potential father who is paying support for a child you believe is not yours. Yes, Your Honor. Furthermore, you and your wife are furious that you spent two months in jail for $6,000 in delinquent support payments. Yes. Yes, you are. Now, we'll address the potential father number two in a moment, but first, Ms. Rochelle, how did you meet Mr. Harris? I was living across the street from him, and I seen him standing out there, and I was like, oh, he is fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys met. Mm-hmm. And at some point, you started a sexual relationship. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so you were in just a sexual relationship or you all were boyfriend and girlfriend, a committed relationship, what was it? Well, he had said that we could be together, so therefore he had me thinking we were together. No, but... it was just a hookup, that's all it was. All right, so Mr. Harris, you claim this was not a relationship. It's not. But you do admit to having a sexual relationship with Miss Rochelle. I do. And so at some point, you found out you were pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, I was over at a friend's house and I was feeling nauseated. And so she kept saying, you're pregnant, you're pregnant. I was like, no, I'm not. Don't do that to me. And so therefore, I went over oh. to the house and I took a pregnancy test and it turned out positive. And so once you had a positive result, did you contact Mr. Harris? No, I did not. You didn't? Now, let me ask you this. Did you contact anybody else? I contacted the other guy. And so, did this other man sign the birth certificate when the baby was born? Yes, he did. Oh, Jerome, let me see that. So, this other man was with you through the pregnancy? Yes, he was. And he, he was, was there, there at the husband. birth, too? Yes, Your Honor. And signed the birth certificate? Yes, you are. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so... Were you hoping here Mr. Harris was the father? I was actually hoping that the other guy was because I know that Mr. Harris was not going to be there. That is not true. And I am not the only guy who should be tested anyway because if you remember, I do li I live across the street from you, but you also had numerous of other guys going in and out to your house. Mr. Harris, I want to hear a little bit more about how you ended up paying child support for a child when you're not listed as the father, but you paying child support. How did that happen? I, I really you don't know. You missed your appointment for your DNA test. Yeah, I mean, that's how it happened. I missed my DNA appointment. I rescheduled it because I didn't have a way to get there. So I had another appointment, but I didn't make that one also. So they just deemed me as the father without actually Again, having yep. the DNA. You were, so you were named the father by default because yes. you failed to show up for your DNA test. Yes, Your Honor. And I have judgment of paternity. Uh, let me see that, Jerome. What an adorable little girl. <laughs> so this is your judgment of paternity, found to be the father of minor child. There it is. So you didn't show and you were deemed to be the father by default. So now you get hauled off to jail yeah. at some yeah. point? Yes. What happened? Uh, they came to the house. At first, I thought I was arrested because of traffic tickets, because that's what the police told me. But mm -hmm. once I got to the jail, they actually pulled up my record and said that I owe like six thousand dollars back in ch child support. So I guess I owe. I guess I owe for over a couple of years or so. I guess. And um, Jasmine is four. Yeah, she's four. So you got arrested, and you spent how long in jail? Uh, two and a half months. I was. Uh, a month and a half in Georgia. Then they moved me from Georgia to a hold in Kentucky to where I was there. And also while I was there, I met a person of us mutual, mutual friends that told me that she's out leaving the child out at home while she's going out and party. She'll drop the child off from other people and stuff like that. And then, um, <clears throat> and he also told me that it's a possibility I could not be the father. So. 
Ms. Rochelle, is it a possibility that he's not the biological father? You yourself let someone else sign the birth certificate. For one, there was not a lot of people going in and out of my house. But he you does, did admit that there was one other guy because that's the person that you let accompany was, you through the pregnancy. It was the other guy and him. That's it. There's no Excuse, one else. Your Honor, um, when I first met, well, when she first started contacting me on his phone, it was the day. It was on Father's Day last year, June fifteenth. That's the day after he went to jail. She had told. She kept on writing, um, "Happy Father's Day, love, Jasmine." And I was like, "Who in the heck is this person?" And you know, I never seen. Because you never heard anything I about her. I never it. heard anything about her. And at you're all. his wife. Yeah. Well, I wasn't then, but we were dating at the time. You were dating. Yes, but I never heard of her. Never heard of a Jasmine at all. I just, I'm tired of all Do this. Do you think he's the father? My honest opinion. I don't even know because she looks like him and she looks like the other guy. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Are there any other possibilities? Any other men? No, there's She not. said there was one, Your Honor. She told you there was one yes. other? Yes. When we started talking last year, when he was in jail, she never told me who, but she said one other guy besides my husband. So where's the third guy? There is only two. Because... Did you tell her three? No, I did yes, not. Yes, Your Honor. So this conversation didn't happen? No, it didn't. Yes, Your Honor, it did. So I have no reason Mr. to Mr. Harris, have you developed a relationship with Jasmine at all? No. I, I've only seen a child maybe once, and that's when I... That's One when time? I was, yeah, that's when I was living, actually, in the state of Kentucky. The other guy said that he would step up and take care of her. So therefore, you know, I'm letting him take care of her. And him pay child support too. So you got two men. But see, the thing is, is that I want him to take care of his daughter. Your Honor. That's all I want, is for him to take care of How his can daughter. you take care of a child that you're not even bonded with when you have the child and a guy there to take care of your child and who loves your child as his own? Why would you want to break that? I want Mr. Harris to be in her life. Understood. With and that I said, I think it's time to go to the results. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Rochelle V. Harris, as it pertains to four-year-old Jasmine Owens, Mr. Harris, you are the father. I just, I don't want to deal with her for 14 more years. She harasses us on the phone. She calls us. She calls us all the time. Jerome, get me my violin. I just, I just So I can that. play a tune to this. I just don't understand. Are you really sitting up there, Miss Harris? I thought you burst out a tear for this baby because now she finally knows who her father is. Mr. Harris, you have a beautiful little girl. Yes, it's time for you to step up to the plate. Do you understand? And you have to say, I'm gonna be there for my child regardless. Are we clear? Yes, Court of the Judge. Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Epstein versus Robertson. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. Epstein, you admit that since finding out you were adopted, you spent your entire life feeling misunderstood and out of place. Aww. Now, 27 years after your adoption, you say you may have found your birth father. <laughs> Today is the very first time you'll meet him. Now, Ms. Epstein, <laughs> if you're ready, I'd like to have Jerome escort the man who may be your biological father into the courtroom. Are you ready? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Jerome. Hello, sir. You come in. You're going to be up on the left. <laughs> You're all right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so take me back, Ms. Epstein. Tell me about your childhood. Okay, so um, as 
Uh, when I was born, I was adopted. I was adopted before birth. I was raised by a very loving, very caring family, um, who I'm still very close with today. Um, and everything was great as a child. And then as, at around teenager age, um, I started becoming very rebellious, refused to go to school, refused to listen to my parents, anything they said I wouldn't do. And I got sent to um, a boarding school, so um, they're like escort service, and an escort service came. They handcuffed me, put a bag over my head, and, um, and brought me to a van where I was brought to boarding school. Oh my goodness. Um, so at 18 years old, I was, I decided to leave the boarding school because I would graduated high school. And you can leave, if you graduate high school and you're 18, you can leave and not stay for the rest of the program. So I left um, and I was sent to a homeless shelter in New Hampshire. So, um, so I met my, my boyfriend there. Um, we left and we went to Oregon together. I had a child, um, we got married. And then um, I wanna say a year or so later, I ended up being homeless again. And um, I adopted both of my children out to a wonderful family. Um, okay. But like I'm following the same steps as my birth mother and they don't want to. So um, that also was really hard. Um, I know that they're in a better place, just like I know that I was in a better place. Um, but it's still hard to give your children up for adoption. So. Oh, absolutely. So it's not, you know, going through that. Mr. Robertson, I have to ask you, you know, knowing that this beautiful young woman might be your daughter, how does it hear just finding out all that she's been through? It tears me up, hurts me inside that she went through so much because if she was with me, it would have never happened. Oh. So, Mr. Robertson, at some point, in your life in this time, do you remember having a relationship with her birth mother? We had a one night thing with, and it was at a party. And to be honest with you, I, I can't remember if I was drunk that time or if I'm just getting old, but I really don't remember it too good. <laughs> but um, I guess we did. And I was right back then, was, I was getting custody of my six kids, which I've raised all by myself from eight months old to eight years old till now. <laughs> So you are a father and you've raised children? Yes, ma'am. I have, I have eight other children. I mean, six other children I raised by myself. Hmm. And no one Did that you she was mine, she know was mine. anything about Miss Epstein being born? No, ma'am. Not a thing. I was never told from beginning till now until, uh, and her mother even Facebooked me about a year ago and still hadn't told me. I was friends with really? her. Really? I was friends with her brother for all my life and he was on Facebook. And I asked him, why didn't you tell me I had a daughter? He said, I didn't know until a few months ago. Um, we've got a good relationship now, her and I do, over the phone. I think she looks a lot like the family. You do? And I'm hoping she is mine, yeah. You're shaking your head, Miss Epstein, like this. What, what, what are you feeling? Uh, all of it. Um, I didn't know that there were friends a year ago on Facebook. No one told me. No one told me, um, and and I, I, you know, I've talked to, I've talked to Paul before, and he said that he saw my mom pregnant at the grocery store or whatever. So, and he always doubted it. So, it's not like he had no idea that I was around or that I existed. He never asked my mom about it. Mr. Robertson, did you admit this to Miss Epstein? I told her that uh, we worked in her and me and her mother worked in the same place. She worked in another part of the area where I worked. Uh, I had seen her mother walking across the parking lot and I could see a little bit of a belly on her. I'm not sure at, at, you know, how long, far along she was or nothing. And the thought went through my mind that, hey, is this, is this my baby? But she Back never, then? Yes, but right. she never come to me I, and I wasn't working at the time. And, and I you never, never seen went her, to her either? I, and I, no, and I never seen her again. But you never that, confronted her either. And you were friends with her brother this entire time so you could have asked if there was a baby born or asked if she was pregnant. <laughs> So, when you got in touch with your birth mother and you asked for Mr. Robertson's name, did she give it to you willingly? How did that happen? She forgot his name. Um, and then she told me, she asked her brother what his name was and he said it was Paul Robertson. Um, his name is not Paul Robertson, it's Robertson. So there's oh no Oh my tea. goodness. So, I so you went looking every... for yes. Robertson too? I'm, I'm friends with, to this day with almost every Paul Robertson on Facebook. <laughs> Poor girl. 
So do you see yourself? Do you have doubts? I don't think I look anything like him or any of his family. You don't? No. Not at all. Mr. Robertson, are you concerned this all is not true? Yes, ma'am, I do. I do feel concerned that it might not be because the fact is I was never told and nobody's ever brought it up to me. Jerome, I think it's time for the results. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. In the case of Epstein versus Robertson, pertaining to whether Mr. Robertson is the biological father of Ms. Epstein, it has been determined by this court that Mr. Robertson is her father. <laughs> it's so good, baby. <laughs> Thank you. I know that has to be wonderful to hear. And I'll tell you this, when we reconnect and reconcile families after all of these years, it's beautiful in this moment. I'm so excited, and I know you all are as well. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Court is adjourned. So when I heard the results today, I was um, pretty much shocked. Um, I didn't believe for the longest time, well, for this entire time, that he was definitely my father. Um, and I didn't, um, I had a lot of questions that um, I guess were answered. So I was definitely surprised and um, relieved.